Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a weekly television show called Team Chicago Challenge. My website is teamchicago.tv, teamchicago.tv. Yeah. Next 10, 12, 14 minutes, I'm going to put together a little clip about The Rock. The Rock is the location for everybody out there watching this on YouTube. The first automobile race in the United States of America took place in Chicago. Started at this location, Thanksgiving Day, 1895. Six cars participated. So sort of a good group of people came here to celebrate that event. I'm going to talk to some of the people. We got to remember my good friend Bill Wilt that from the last 23 years did a TV show from this location, and this year he didn't. But we're going to see, talk to Bill a little bit, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, and you learned something about this location in Chicago, the first automobile race. And don't forget my website, TeamChicago.tv. You got the past 23 years. <laughs> but, uh, I suppose it never occurred to me. I suppose it kind of had to end sometime. I am 75 years old now. Congratulations. Well, this is Bill Wilt. He is the producer of the TV show Motorsports Unlimited. He's been producing his TV show as long as I've been producing Team Chicago Challenge. Bill and I raced motorcycles back in the early 1970s. He went on to race cars, and then he started the TV show, Motorsports Unlimited, where he covers all forms of motorsports. The rock here, just south of the Museum of Science and Industry, is the location of the start of the first automobile race. It's 9 o'clock a.m., and for the last 23 years, folks have been gathering at this location to celebrate the first automobile race in America. In 1995, Bill was there to capture the celebration when they first dedicated the rack. Let's go to that footage now. I want to make sure that we can see the building behind us. We've got this, again, this, the architecture was just gorgeous on these structures. And hopefully, as I'm talking, I'm also putting in a picture of the start of the first race, which shows the building behind the cars, the six cars that actually made it to the state, and they're in the snow. So <laughs> we're, not, we're not quite in the snow, but it's plenty cold today. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say that. I can't believe how spoiled we are. I mean, these guys went on those um, the first race 100 years ago, and they had no covering over the car or anything and no protection at all as a matter of fact people were pulled from the vehicle suffering from exhaustion and exposure it was very very tough the day was not unlike today the temperature was about the same although there was of the 12 inches of snow that fell three days earlier there was still some six to eight inches and some of it drifting still around and the temperatures you can imagine you it, it was absolutely over. it really it was absolutely and brutal there were, there were no roads I mean it was dirt no 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 there were cobblestone streets for the horses okay. In any event, folks, I hope we're going to find some people celebrating this occasion. I hope it's not going to be us, but even if it is just us, we're going to have a good time anyhow. So we know how to, there you go. So if you guys would please tell the folks. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. We are going to have a celebration, and John, if you would, widen your shot a little bit and show all the activity going on here. Apparently, we're going to have some kind of a dedication and all that, and first of all, you are. George Bovis, one of the members of the committee that has been putting this all together. Okay, tell us what's going on here. What are we, what are we, uh, what are we about to do? Well, it's been two years in the planning, but we are going to be dedicating a very large piece of Wisconsin granite with a plaque commemorating the first race in America, and there will be uh, upwards of 100 cars here, starting with perhaps uh, several dozen pre-1920 cars that are parading down here as we speak to recreate and reenact the route uh, today. Did you get permission to take to go, because I know Michigan Avenue, the big problem when we did the thing last year to try to show what the route was, is that Michigan Avenue from about, almost from the loop all the way down here is one way the wrong way now. Uh, how are you going to get around that or did you get police cooperation? With, with We have some police cooperation. The city and the park district has been very helpful to us as we've come to the conclusion here. And uh, all of the cars will be obeying all of the uh, speed limits and laws and rules of the road, but uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to assemble a reasonably orderly parade down that very important section. We have a uh, historically recreated route that, to the best of today's roads, duplicates the uh, 54 miles that were traveled originally, and uh, that will be what they will be uh, using. 
Okay, now I don't want to put you on the spot, so if you're not real familiar with it, go ahead and back off of the question. But the audience has heard Bill Wilt's perception of the original race, and I've gone to the Chicago Historical Society and gotten all the original documentation and, and the photo stats of the newspaper from the Times Herald. Now, give us a little bit of your feeling of the race, uh, both of what it was and its importance and the rest of it. Well, first of all, we're very glad it's not snowing today, and that's the one lack of authenticity that we'll uh, accept. But we got the temperature. Uh, but we have the cold. Uh, there's just no way to state it more clearly than that this was the event that introduced the automobile to America. It took place here in Chicago, which at that time was the center of the automobile industry. And from this humble beginning, the industry grew into Indianapolis, South Bend, Detroit, and other uh, cities uh, which now uh, represent the auto industry we have today. So this was the beginning. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As we return to the present, this is November 22nd, 2018. As I scan and look at some of the cars of some of the folks that came out to celebrate the first automobile race held in America. And we look at this MG with a Ford engine. These are some great looking cars that people have brought out this MG has definitely got to be a very fast car. Now let's go back to 1995 when the Auto Sport Committee dedicated the Boulder. Let's listen to a few of the speeches. Armin Ross is my name, and it's my real pleasure to welcome you to this 100th anniversary of the day the automobile was introduced to our country an historic day then, an historic day now. Even Washington, you know, is observing it. The last five stamps that are being issued this year are all of vintage cars ranging from 1893 to 1901. At the original race, there were 83 contestants who lined up, only six all equipped with a foghorn or a trumpet in order to let other vehicles or pedestrians know to get out of the way, only six ended up by being in the race. They started up at the starting line. One of them ran into a horse cart in front of the Art Institute, they tell us, and, and another one crashed into a sleigh. And we're lucky to have with us today the great-grandson and grandson of the winner of that race. It was on a very blustery Thanksgiving morning, 100 years ago today, after a 12-inch snowfall. Only two of, of the cars traveling at about 15 miles per hour, made the full 54-mile trip from here at almost this spot to Evanston and back again, both internal combustion vehicles. Today's event uh, ends the month on a, a real high point, and that is uh, uh, commemorating not only 100 years of automobile racing, uh, but really what uh, historians like uh, Dr. Scharsberg and uh, Tom Reese and some of you here uh, uh, who are here today uh, recognize as uh, the birth of the automobile industry and really when Chicago uh, introduced uh, America to the automobile. Uh, it's appropriate that it is cold today, and uh, uh, you all know the conditions that we uh, or were faced in the uh, on the first race. Uh, we're slogging around in a bit of snow, uh, and uh, that uh, uh, terrible weather may really have been a determining factor in proving the reliability and uh, really the viability of the automobile and uh, the changes that it, it proved. Uh, we're not alone on the 50th celebration. It was 16 degrees, so uh, don't feel too uh, uh, too bad and uh, so in the uh, uh, spirit of uh, J. Frank uh, Durier today should uh, really be no different. Um, many of you are from different regions of the AACA and uh, Horses Carriage Club of America and uh, we're going to be dragging our uh, 03 Stevens Durier around the country here and try to visit uh, with many of you in your uh, specific uh, regions. Um, the brass era uh, uh, folks who are restoring Brass Era cars uh, it, are in particular, I think, uh, very important stewards of some great pieces of artwork, as we can see here uh, today, lining the uh, road. And uh, this year, more than any year, uh, gives us a, a wonderful opportunity to uh, uh, give exposure uh, and, and really allow people uh, accessibility to these great pieces of, uh, of work. Uh, and perhaps along the way, we can inspire some more enthusiasm 
enthusiasts uh, to our great hobby here uh, and of course have some fun. Well, at, at this point, I feel like I should say, gentlemen, start your engines, but maybe if I can uh, get you up here, Dad, we can unveil the, uh, uh, the, the plaque. now from our historian, Dr. Sharsberg. Thank you very much. I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to say just one or two words. They said, keep it short. And uh, I was almost tempted to pull something that's a little bit theatrical. Uh, I may do it yet and then just take uh, one or two moments. My purpose here is to, is to try to put this race in perspective in terms of why the race and why Chicago for that race. My, my inclination was to uh, really keep it short and uh, say uh, what was the significance of the race. Well, here it is, right here. This is a booklet prepared by Frank Durier, and it says when Chicago introduced the automobile to America. That's why the race. This event, more than any other event that occurred at any other time, was responsible for opening the door on the auto age. It began here, it began in Chicago. The great significance of it is precisely that. Nearly every historian, never, nearly every auto enthusiast dates the auto age beginning in 1895. Herman Colsat, editor of the Chicago Times Herald, had the idea for it from uh, uh, watching uh, uh, the uh, the uh, race uh, in uh, in Paris, and uh, decided that America needed it too. He uh, promoted it, and it started from relatively near here. And uh, with that, uh, I think that's enough. Just remember what Frank said. A few years later. The significance of the race when Chicago introduced the automobile to America. Thank you. And now let me introduce you to you much, Mason Maynard, who was one of the participants back in 1995. Guy, uh, an older person in Chicago will read it too. Hey, my name is Mason Maynard, and. Uh, <laughs> I happened to hear that they were going to recreate the Times Herald race. I had already put my cars away, and a buddy of mine came in from Texas, and he was going to drive one of my cars, and I drove the other one. And by chance, the Duriers ended up riding with me, the grandson and the great grandson. They were both older than I was. Uh, so what was the day like? Uh, it was colder than hell, windy, the event was extremely poorly organized, and it was absolutely hilarious going down to the host hotel downtown because uh, the hotel did not have any idea how rough one and two cylinder cars are on the, any area that they're in. The entire parking lot was covered with oil, coolant, this, that, and the other. Most of the cars didn't run worth a damn. A lot of guys brought them in from Michigan and Minnesota. I don't care, guys, if, if you Minnesota and Michigan guys uh, you know, want, want to hear it, but as far as I'm concerned, most of your cars didn't run worth a damn. <laughs> well, of course, my cars were a number of years uh, newer than yours. But at any rate, uh, it was a good time, and uh, I ended up changing cars and picking up parts from the transaxle from a car that, that blew the transaxle not too far from where we're standing at here right now, and I insisted on picking up the parts and putting them in the trunk of my uh, studs because I knew that was 
how that transaxle is going to be rebuilt. Of the uh, four car guys that were very active in Chicago as far as for uh, getting cars when they built the Dan Ryan in here and whatnot, there's one of those guys left alive today, and his name is Bob Nightum. And Bob Nightum hung out with uh, many car guys. All the other ones are dead. Dr. Flywheel, whose real name is Don Mates. No, right. Uh, Paul Hedburn, Don Donahue, Charlie Fabian, and to a man, those guys had uh, a lifetime of playing with cars. And if they were, most of them would be between 95 to, yeah, they'd probably be about 95 if they were alive today. Thank you, Mason. Now let's look at some of the cars that participated at the 100th anniversary right here in Chicago. one of the twin cylinder air-cooled cars break down, we are looking at a 1966 Corvette with a small block engine. And I had the opportunity to talk to some of the folks that came to celebrate the first automobile race in America right here in 2018. Pete Bellander from Lombard, Illinois. I've been watching Motorsports Unlimited since uh, just about the time it started. There are some periods I missed it because I didn't have Comcast, but uh, I'm an old fan. I'm 75 years old, as old as Bill, and uh, always been involved with motorsports one way or another. Either motorcycles, boats, uh, cars. Uh, I used to run a gasser back in the 60s, and i uh, just been involved with motorsports all my life. 1986 uh, stock Corvette, silver. Uh, it's uh, eight, we call it the uh, 1986 split window coupe because my buddy knows how much I like split window coupes, but I can't afford one. 1963, I can't afford one. So, so my buddy says, drop it off at my uh, uh, wrap shop, come back after lunch. 
I came back after lunch and he, he made it a split window coupe. He put a wrap on top of the window. <laughs> I started laughing the first time I saw it. I couldn't believe what he did. But uh, now we drive our 86 split window coupe around. We did uh, you, uh, Route 66 twice in the Corvette. And we also did the Lincoln Highway uh, just last year. Morning, Matt Psyche. Sergeant Arms for Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade. I've been watching Bill's show since basically day one. I've missed a few years also. Um, always something to learn on Bill's show. Very informative. Motorcycles, cars, snowmobiles, planes, transmissions, you name it, Bill's covered it. Okay, and he's done quite an extensive job at it. Okay. We're here today for the, at The Rock for the first, for, for the first American automobile race was Hell. I'm with Chicago Toys for Tots. 41st annual Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade. It's Sunday, December 2nd. Dan Ryan Woods, all the way up the lane, Tech and DeVry. Okay. We help needy children providing a Christmas. Our motto is every child deserves a toy at Christmas time. I don't think wise when we sell the car. I want first pick. So in March, he called me up, he said, I'm selling the Buick. I says, yeah? He says, what do you want for it? He says, well, I want so much. I says, okay, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. I'll be there at noon with cash. So I bought the car at 1 o'clock. I went back to my friend's shop to show it to him. He actually worked for Bauer Buick in 1962. In 1963, he was doing new car get ready. So he told me he worked on this car originally. So not only do I have an original car, I have the original mechanic to go with it. And I left it by him and we fixed everything that was wrong with the car. New tires, new shocks, new brakes, uh, some engine work and a tune up and there you go. So theoretically I have a brand new 63 Buick. Air conditioned, gets down to 40 inside. If you leave it idle in your driveway, you open the door and snow falls out. Hi, hey, uh, good morning. My name's Ken Becker from Tinley Park, Illinois. And uh, this is sort of an annual little last uh, get out to come to the rock uh, with a couple friends. So uh, we're here again. And uh, I brought my Buick, 1965 Buick Skylark Grand Sport. It's a pretty rare car. It's a one of 200 because it's a factory four speed, factory air with dual quads. Um, like I said, pretty unique and I enjoy driving it and uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's got a Buick nail head, 401 cubic inch, 325, 345 with dual quads, horsepower. And I says, well, this is unique and I want something special. And you'll never see a I doubt another one again a four speed factory or with dual quads. Thank you, gentlemen. And this is my story from The Rock, just south of the Museum of Science and Industry, 2018 Thanksgiving Day. For more information on Bill Wilt and his TV show, Motorsports Unlimited, his website is msutv.com. On YouTube, you can search. With this link, just follow this link on YouTube for the entire 59-minute TV show that was produced back in 1995. Or you can search on YouTube with Bill Will Motorsports Unlimited, Chicago's first race. To get in touch with me, it's teamdan45 at gmail.com. Send me an email if you want to talk about my show. And remember, you can always search on YouTube with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing. The musical clips were by Mike Preet.